Welcome back, America. Ambassador Nikki Haley joins me now. Good morning, Ambassador Haley. Thank you for joining me this morning, and welcome back. Good morning, Hugh. It's great to be with you again. I want to begin with the tragic episode this weekend in Jacksonville where a racist uh, gunned down three black people shopping at the Dollar General store. Had he been able to get on the campus of Edward Waters University, he would have done more damage, but he wasn't. You were governor in South Carolina when Dylan Roof murdered nine black people at Mother Emanuel. Why does this keep happening, especially on the political fringes, the racist right wing, uh, the extremists on the right, and the extremists on the left, as happened in, uh, in Nashville, Tennessee recently? Why? I'll tell you, I mean, anytime I hear of something like this, it takes me back to a very dark place. Um, it takes me to, you know, those days where South Carolina was broken and and we couldn't believe that this was the first time it happened in a place of worship. We couldn't believe that it happened during Bible study. And we couldn't believe that that that, that murderer would have that much hate in his veins. And I think if you go back and you look at, you know, what caused him to be like that, and I'm sure they're going to find that about this murderer as well, is, you know, there's a lot of hate online with social media. We've got a lot of mental health issues. And you combine that with the the rhetoric that is happening in America of division and, you know, just being able to hide behind, you know, something on social media and getting angry. It's It causes for a bad cocktail. And When you get that, people die, and we have to stop this. And there is no place in America for hate of any sort whatsoever. We have to call it out when it happens, but we also have to understand every person in America has a responsibility, a responsibility for what you say, a responsibility for how you act, a responsibility for how you raise your children, a responsibility of way things are talking about in the classroom, and a responsibility to not let the narrative of America be to define people based on how they look, how they act, where they're born, what their hair color is, what religion they are, all of that. We have to see every person as a mother, daughter, sister, father, son, brother, and know that every person is a child of God. And, you know, we I, we just can't stop until this this stops happening. It's it's horrible. I feel for those families. I feel for the community. I feel for the state of Florida. Ambassador Haley, I, I had Secretary Clinton on half dozen years ago after she had lost to President Trump. And she put, she pegged the number of hardcore racists in America at about 600,000. A number I, I don't disagree with just based on percentages. Not not even, uh, even a small percentage of those armed is dangerous. How do we change that climate of hate that leads so many people to act out their violent fantasies, whether on left or the right, whether it's in Jacksonville or it's in uh, Nashville? How do we stop that? Well, I'll point you back to what happened in South Carolina. I mean, when we had those murders, that was on the heels of Ferguson. And, you know, what we did was very different from what those did in Minnesota after George Floyd and those around the country did, which is they went to riots, they went to violence, they went to, you know, worse behavior. And what we did was we turned away from that fear. We turned toward God and we turned toward the values that make this country great. And, you know, I'll remind you that it was 60 years ago that Martin Luther King gave that speech. Look at how far we've come in 60 years. That should be the motivation in saying we're not done yet. We're not done yet, but we can do it. We have proven we can do it. And our goal in America is to make today better than yesterday. Our goal in America is to make sure that every American feels a responsibility that Americans take care of each other, that we love each other, and that we continue to teach our children to be that way. And, you know, that falls on the media, that falls on politicians, that falls on leaders, that falls on teachers, that falls on pastors, that falls on parents. And we have to know that and live every day knowing that. Now, I want to dial out to 30,000 feet over America's history since World War II. And I just talked about this with Senator Cotton. We didn't see Korea coming. We didn't see the disaster of Vietnam coming. We did not see 9-11 coming. We did not execute Iraq or Afghanistan correctly. President Obama blew Libya, blew Syria, did not prevent Ukraine from being invaded the second time. Georgia happened on W's watch, but nobody saw China turning. The national strategic document that W produced in 06 is just like like two throwaway pages on China. And then this administration did not prevent Ukraine second. 
What is with America's strategic deficit? Why do we not prepare for the next conflict, Ambassador Haley? I think it goes back to our intelligence. I don't think our intelligence agencies are up to par. I don't think that we are getting the proper information. If we did, we would have seen the fall of Afghanistan the way it was. We would have seen so many of those other events, and it's we're just not getting it. And that's why when I'm president, we're going to go back in and fine-tune the mission. Don't forget that when we talk about modernizing the military, make sure that we have the most up-to-date ammunition and equipment to prevent our men and women in the military, we also have to make sure we have the most up-to-date intelligence. And we are archaic in that, and we are not as good as our peers, and we need to make sure that, one, we strengthen those partnerships of intelligence, two, we get our intelligence agencies back on the mission of saving Americans, and then three, make sure that what are we doing to make sure we have the the top-of-the-line information so that we do that. And then that's only the second leg of it. The third leg of it is communicate it. Tell the American people, treat American people like adults and give them the information you have and what we need to do to protect ourselves. Why in this last decade did it not come out that the Chinese were buying up all of this farmland? I mean, food security is national security. Why didn't come up that they were running cables underneath that farmland to our military installations to spy? Why didn't it come up that 90 percent of our law enforcement drones are Chinese? Why didn't it come up about the harm of the research that was being stolen from the, from the universities when all those millions were going in there? Why didn't it come up that Chinese front companies have been lobbying Congress? Why are we allowing foreign lobbyists in the first place? You know, why didn't it come up that China was developing these neurostrike weapons that can actually engineer and change brain activity of military leaders and groups of people? What more do we need to know than to realize It's not that China's coming. China's already here. They have infiltrated our country. No, I do not know anything about the neurostrike weapon, uh, Mr. Uh, Madam Ambassador. So to fill us in on that, but I know you got a hard out, so I want to give you the last question and take as long as you want. The most memorable exchange of the first debate was between you and Vivek Ramaswamy, where you said you have no foreign policy experience, that you have no foreign policy experience, and it shows. My question is, Given our disastrous record in foreign policy, does a lack of experience in being wrong matter? Because we've just been wrong, 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 wrong. Well, so to start, the China Chinese with the neurostrike weapons, they are the biggest developer of neurostrike weapons, and that is their ability to engineer and change brain activity. Um, and it is, you know, something that we should all be worried about the same way they're developing hypersonic missiles, and we're behind on that. I mean, look, that exchange in... Uh, at the debate, the problem I had with that is it was just naive at best. It was naive to sit there and think that you can go and give Russia, you know, this part of Ukraine and say, okay, now don't go being friends with China anymore. That's just naive. And we have to keep Americans safe. You can't experiment with this. You can't do that. And we can't be, this was the other part that bothered me, we can't be so narcissistic in America, because we've been that in the past. You can't be so narcissistic to think that America doesn't need friends. It's ludicrous. We need as many alliances as possible. For Vivek to say that we're not going to fund Israel, that we're going to stop funding Israel, we need Israel as much as Israel needs us. They're the front line of defense for Iran. You know, you talk about Russia, Ukraine is the front line of defense to war. We are trying to prevent war. If Putin says Poland and the Baltics are next, believe a dictator when they say they're going to do that. And so giving them a bit of Ukraine, guess what that does to Putin? It leaves him wanting more. It tells China they can go ahead and make the move in Taiwan. It tells Iran we're not serious. That is incredibly naive to sit there and think that that's the way the world functions. I have negotiated with China. I've negotiated with Russia. I've dealt with Iran. These are thugs and dictators. When Putin's talking, Putin's lying. And if you don't get that, then you are not going to be able to keep Americans safe. Does that position, uh, let me put it this way and close out. Did the debate help you? Did you see online donations tick up? Did you see people show up at events? Did it help you? Because I called you and Governor DeSantis the winners of that debate. Oh, my gosh. The phones haven't stopped ringing. I We raised a million dollars in the first 72 hours. I mean, people were the, the number of volunteers and signups to our campaign were overwhelming. And we loved it. I mean, look, I love debates because if 
it's a great opportunity for Americans to see who their choices are side by side, you know, hearing their voices, hearing their thoughts, hearing their views and seeing how they act. And I think that, you know, it was it was great for us. We're incredibly grateful um, to everybody that went to NikkiHaley.com and said we want to be a part of this. But it, it's just the beginning. You know, we're just getting started. We have a country to save, and I'm not going to stop until we save her. And this is about being serious, and it's about being thoughtful. But more importantly, it's about communicating and treating Americans like the adults that they are and the fact that they are capable of making good decisions. I have faith in the American people. I always have. And so I know that they're going to see the right way on this, and I know that we're going to work as hard as we can to earn every single American vote. Ambassador Haley, thanks for coming back. Keep coming back. I appreciate your taking time with me this morning. Thanks so much. I'll go to NikkiHaley.com and join us. Thank you, Governor.